Am I not able to title this first? We'll just title this something like, Your Foolish Friends Are More Dangerous Than, than Evil Friends. Not that you have evil friends. Foolishness is more dangerous than evil, I guess. So, I'm over here on my little exegesis Instagram page. If you guys want to follow me at Nikki Schumacher Official, I have started to share more over there. Hello, Sarah Bear. Hello, Jenny's Wreath Boutique. So, I'm kind of sharing about the Falchi emails today. Probably a little late to the game for most of my close friends or people that follow me on Instagram. But I did want to touch base on some things that I think are really important to, for me and my circle. And all I'm doing is learning right, right along, hey lady, probably see you tomorrow. So I'm just learning right alongside of everyone else. And I'm doing my part, doing the best I can to get Idaho housewives excited about politics because it really does matter it, it you can't separate politics from religion that's just ridiculous and um sarah is not a housewife but you're still a homemaker and <clears throat> so the whole fauci thing for most of my friends uh we're not surprised at what his emails said we're actually surprised that anyone is surprised by what his email said we knew that masks didn't work ever. We always knew that. We, we always knew that. So yeah, we're more surprised that people are shocked. And another thing that we're not surprised about is that our uninformed friends are still uninformed. Like if you had anybody call you a conspiracy theorist or crazy, or you're a murderer. And if you don't wear your mask, like I literally had a friend from my old church. I mean, I had so many people comment to me. That's fine. DMs, comments, whatever. I saved the receipts. But when they comment toward like friends of mine that they don't even know on publicly on my Facebook, you're a murderer. And this is a person who used to go to church with me. They don't know if this person knows the Lord. They have no idea where they are with Christ telling them you're a murderer and not a Christian if you don't wear a mask. That is just nuts. But that is beside the point. Those people who were very masked up still don't know about the Fauci emails because they're ignorant. They're just low information people. And it's not, I mean, I've been there. I'm not looking down upon them. I'm just saying that is how it is. So, the reason this is important, we, you need to be, be wary. Proverbs says that um, someone who has to send a message from a fool, like if you, you know, back in the day they'd have servants or whatever, and if you needed to send a message and the only person you could hire was a fool, that is a really scary position for you to be in. Um, one of my favorite quotes from Dietrich Bonhoeffer and it's actually been going viral lately. Now, if you don't know who Dietrich Bonhoeffer is, um, he was a Christian man and he got caught trying to kill Hitler, literally. So he has a paper, he has like a book, um, called letters and papers from prison. So he says, folly is a more dangerous enemy to the good than evil. One can protest against evil. It, one can protest against evil. It can be unmasked and if need be prevented by force. Evil always carries the seeds of its own destruction as it makes people at the least uncomfortable against folly. We have no defense. Neither protest nor force can touch it. Reasoning is no use. And he goes on and it's just eerie how everything he's saying, um, applies to today. I'm going to say some other things out of this passage from his book that are just chilling. Um, 
If we look closely, we see that any violent display of power, whether political or religious, produces an outburst of folly in a large part of humanity. It's like every time there's a bunch of power that just becomes violent, like we're seeing right now, um, folly it is going to grow out of that. It's a very weird state of affairs. Um, he goes on to say, one feels in, there's no point in trying to argue with the fool. One, one feels, in fact, when talking to them, that one is dealing not with the person themselves, but with slogans, catchwords, and the like, which have taken hold of them. If you really love others, I'm doing this for you. You're doing this for me. We're in this together. They are under a spell. They are blinded. Their very nature is being misused and exploited. Having thus become a passive instrument, the fool will be capable of any evil and at the same time incapable of seeing that it is evil. And he basically says the only way to get them out of their folly is honestly to free them from whatever is going on in the culture. Um, trying to reason with the fools is... There is really no point in it. And... So, you know, part of me, I love all these memes going around, apologize to a conspiracy theorist friend because these Fauci emails came out. He, you know, there are emails between him and Sucker Turd and all this stuff about how he never believed that masks work this whole time. Now he said he flip-flopped in the media, but consistently in his emails, he never believed that they worked at all, which is not a surprise to us anyone with common sense or who has ever worked in healthcare. Yes, science is never settled, but it doesn't flip flop within one year, 13 times. Um, what we're, what we're shocked about is that people are shocked. We're also kind of, maybe we're shocked that people still don't get it. Like you be walking into businesses, they're still masked, even though these emails came out and a lot of them are saying, yeah, I have to wear the mask until I get the, the a dance with the hokey pokey. So the problem with foolishness that we need to be leery of is Hitler did not do all the evil he did by himself. He needed brown shirts and he needed the masses to go along with what he was wanting them to do. And in, in, with our friends to the north in Canada, Trudeau is not the one dragging pastors to jail for holding church. It's not him. It's, it's the cops. He's not the one dragging law-abiding citizens who are business owners from their businesses just trying to feed their families it's the cops. Um, I'm very lucky to live in a town with a very good, from what I understand, very good um, police force and a good chief of police. Um, so that's, I'm not like criticizing, oh, cops are bad. But, um, you know, what's the difference between our Canadian friends up to the north and our friends here? Well, here in Idaho, which I do believe is one of the best places on earth, people were willing to be criticized and stand up. I'm not saying that no Canadians did that. Um, but what's the difference between Idaho and, you know, right to the west of us in Oregon? What is the difference? Um, people showed up to our health district and demanded freedom. So foolishness is very, very dangerous. Be leery of it don't necessarily argue with it. You have to use your wisdom because back when I, I mean, I used to believe a lot of just vile things that I was honestly just quite ignorant. But one thing I wasn't was closed minded. If someone, um, shared with me, um, a fact or, a you know, showed me a picture of something, for instance, I believed in abortion. And when someone argued with me about that. Of course, I didn't find it to be fun. Sadly, big government organizations like the CDC are putting a lot of pressure. Big government hates most all smaller institutions because they threaten their own bias authority. Yes, 
this is true. But um, I am really hopeful here in Idaho, like even though we do have a bunch of rhinos, otherwise derps in office, Idaho people stand up and they show up to legislation, they show up to the health district. And I don't necessarily think that's always everyone's place, you know, for instance, if you're a pregnant or breastfeeding mother, but sometimes it is, it is our place. And um, so just be praying for all, all of the things going around um, in politics, but also just, you know, we're in Idaho and we're thankful for what we have here, but let's not be critical of those who are standing up and are willing to get arrested for doing the little things because it's because of them standing up that the optics are pointed toward Idaho and it hasn't gotten worse than it already has. Like um, Janice McGeehan, I was calling her McGeechan and I was wrong. It's actually McGeehan. But, um, you know, when she pulled, some people think of it as a political stunt. I'm not actually against political stunts if they're effective. She got attention on Idaho um, to show, wow, this is like the most conservative state in the union and they're still under a state of emergency. So um, I, I totally support the stunt or whatever um, that she was calling it. But I also just want to encourage you guys, don't hold your breath that your friends are going to apologize or, um, you know, have this big revelation. Some will. Some have been open-minded this whole time, quietly listening and um, keep sharing because I was foolish. I'm still foolish about a lot of things. The only thing that can change that is people who are willing to share what they think. And um, for some, that's one-on-one. -on -one. For some, that's on your social media. Um, there is a time and place for things, obviously. But if people were ever too afraid to share with me, I would still believe in abortion. I would still be a feminist. I would still believe a lot of things that I won't get into on this glorious June Pride Month. So, um, that was a little sarcasm there. But anyway, so that is really all I had to share. I've probably shared for too long. And I hope you guys are healthy and free. And I hope you know that you're good, you're precious. Grace and peace.